All right, last week we worked on the doorway, framing it out, uh, installed a threshold, built a door, and got that installed. Um, this week we're going to put some drip cap over the windows and the doorway. Uh, I'm going to put some spar varathane on the door, uh, both on the inside and the outside. Install some trim around the outside edges, and if we have time, uh, we'll install a porch light on the door side of the camper. So let's get to it. Okay, I picked up some aluminum drip cap um, online. I just picked it up off of Amazon and uh, I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in picking some of these up. Um, but I wanted to paint these black so that they would match the black trim that I have uh, around the doorway. And uh, here you can see I installed the very first one on the smallest window. And uh, I'm really not crazy about how those silver panhead screws look on uh, the drip cap, you know, with the black background. So, like I have done on all the other uh, areas, I'm going to pull those out and paint those black. So, I also installed uh, the first one above the doorway as well. And uh, I just want to point out that these drip caps are made out of really thin mill aluminum and when I first got them I thought that uh, these aren't going to be sturdy enough but uh, once you get those installed uh, they become very rigid and uh, I'm sure they're going to be just fine. And then I installed the last one on uh, the, the large egress window and uh, when I'm taking a look at this one, this one really convinced me that uh, I need to uh, remove the screws and paint them black. So I used butyl tape when I uh, installed uh, the drip cap you know, around the window. So even when I remove the screws, uh, it stays in place. So I was, uh, the, the main reason why I used the butyl tape is because I wanted to uh, make the screw holes uh, waterproof or watertight. And uh, so I pulled all the screws out and uh, uh, here I just gave them a couple of quick coats of uh, black paint. Um, I was going to pick up some black penhead screws off of Amazon and a box of 50 of these cost $25. And I could get uh, the same box in, uh, you know, unpainted and there was about five bucks. So even when you factor in the cost of the paint, uh, you're still way ahead, so <laughs> keep that in mind if you're looking for colored screws. Just it's cheaper to just buy some spray paint and uh, color them yourself. So here I've got uh, the black screws back installed, and uh, I think this looks a lot better uh, with the black screws against the black uh, drip cap. So. Uh, I'll, I'll go back and I'll clean up uh, the butyl tape that has squeezed out on the sides. So I got uh, some marine varnish and uh, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a couple of coats on the door. So this is uh, marine spar varnish. So I applied the first coat and uh, you're supposed to wait uh, 14 hours between coats so I need to uh, apply the second coat uh, the next day so I wasn't able to put more than one coat on at this time uh, but I did also uh, put a coat on uh, the inside of the door so the next day um, I didn't take any photos but I did uh, put on uh, a couple extra coats And here I added an entry door assist grab handle uh, next to the door. I was noticing as I was uh, going up uh, the stool into the camper that I kept grabbing the inside of the door. So I thought I might as well put uh, one, uh, an assist grab handle on. 
Okay, so now with the drip cap done, I'm starting to install the edge trim around the outside edges. And uh, this is really low profile aluminum, so it bends really easily and doesn't bind up when you bend it. And uh, you can see here that I added silicone to the back side of the trim. And uh, you can probably see it squeezing out a little bit there on those bottom two. Um, but I just wanted to, again, um, just kind of protect it against uh, any water seeping into the uh, screw holes. All right, so the first side um, is done, uh, the edge trim, and I've started on the second side. And uh, to get all the way around one side, it takes um, three eight-foot pieces of this trim to make it all the way around. Okay, so all the trim is installed now and uh, these also come with a 50 foot long uh, roll of vinyl insert. So uh, I took that and started and ran it all the way around and then I cut it to size. And it's used to cover up uh, the screws and to make the trim look like uh, a single piece of trim, even though it's uh, actually three pieces. So the vinyl trim, it comes in uh, multiple colors. I wanted to keep uh, all of the trim on the camper black, so that's the color that I went, I went with. And uh, if I want to change the color down the road, you know, maybe make it yellow or something that complements yellow, then uh, I, can, I can make that change easily. It just slips in and out uh, without any issues. Okay, so the vinyl insert is completely installed on both sides now, and uh, I think it looks pretty clean. Um, I like uh, the fact that uh, I don't have to paint any of these screws uh, because they're all hidden under the uh, vinyl tape. And uh, here I've just got a couple more pictures, uh, different angles that uh, I'll show you here for a couple minutes. Okay, next I installed this solar LED porch light and it has an on off switch where on equals auto with a motion detector. And I also got a nice double battery tray with the hold down strap and uh, I couldn't find one specifically for golf cart batteries. But uh, I noticed a review on this one that mentioned that it works great for golf cart batteries that were purchased from Costco. And that's where I got these. So I figured I'd roll the dice and uh, see how it fit and uh, worked out pretty well. Okay, this is where my shore power is going to be coming into the camper. And I'll have a junction box down here somewhere and I'll run uh, a wire up from the junction box to the top shelf and then down to the side where the battery box is gonna go. So here's where I'm gonna be placing the battery box. Uh, I'm gonna have a, a bench with a compartment over the wheel well. Um, so I wanted to have a 120 plug here as well so that when I'm plugged in to shore power, I can charge up my batteries. And I also wanted to have a 120 plug on this top shelf um, just so that I could run uh, maybe a toaster or a small microwave or something. So I uh, ran a wire up here as well. And uh, here uh, it's starting to get dark so uh, as soon as I came out to the camper the motion detector kicked in and the light came on. Um, it actually does a pretty good job. It lights up that whole uh, side by the camper, so uh, I think that's going to do pretty well. 
and uh, it comes on automatically and then stays on for a minimum of 60 seconds. And if there's no uh, motion or movement, then uh, it'll automatically go off. All right, so I had a lot of uh, scrap pieces of two by two laying around. Uh, they were cutoffs, and I wanted to use as many of those as I could. So I uh, nailed them up along the sides and the ceiling um, to create more of a nailing surface. And here, uh, since this is uh, where the AC is gonna be coming into the camper, um, I wanted to tie everything together into a junction box. And uh, I don't have this mounted yet, but uh, it'll go somewhere um, in this corner. And then I ran up from the junction box to the kitchenette area and uh, I'll probably have a GFCI outlet here and uh, one in the uh, battery compartment as well. Okay, so here's the, uh, the box that will be for the uh, battery compartment. Uh, this will allow me to charge the batteries uh, whenever I'm plugged into uh, shore power. And then I placed a box up here above the egress window and uh, this is just in case maybe down the road I want to uh, mount a small TV in this area I'll have a place to plug it in. And then I placed a couple uh, back uh, where the uh, bed's going to be going and uh, these sit out uh, of the wall slightly so I needed to add some kind of a backer board and I just used a scrap piece of plywood here. And that way, when I plug something in, it's not going to uh, push back into the wall. And here's one on the other side as well. And uh, again, I just threw uh, just some scrap behind it uh, to keep it from pushing back when I uh, plug something in. And uh, these will all be covered up, so I'm not worried about how they look. Okay, then I started to uh, pull my DC wiring here. And uh, this is the front of the camper, and here I'm going to have a, some USB and 12 volt ports. And here are the wires that I'm going to use for my uh, vent fan. And uh, I have a, a fantastic fan that I'll be installing uh, somewhere down the road, but before I can close uh, the ceiling up, I need to make sure that I plan ahead and have my wires run. And uh, this is back towards the rear of the camper, um, above where the bed's going to be. And uh, I'll have some additional USB and 12 volt ports here as well for charging or running uh, something uh, that's DC. Okay, so this is where I'm going to have my DC uh, junction box. This is in the battery compartment. And uh, so all of my DC wiring is going to converge in this area. All right, so that's going to do it for this week. Um, here's one last look at the outside of the camper. Uh, you can see the drip cap and the trim, the uh, grab handle, and uh, the porch light. So uh, tune in for the next video, and uh, we'll continue where we left off. Talk to you guys later.